So I said to Karika, now she won't have access to this management report because only administrators got access to it. Yeah. But um, you can give her access the way you gave her access to the all availability. Okay. You can decide which reports is she going to do. I'm going to go into my, oh, I'm logged into my demo because okay. I need some revenue to show you what it looks like. So you can pull your report from any date to any date to the whole of March. And you can say display on screen, take it to PDF or Excel. Okay. So mine don't have a point of sale connected. So it just says to me there's no POS connected. It takes a while to calculate the full report. Did you do what for a month? Yeah. Okay, so first on the top is the financial report. There's all your figures. So that's total revenue by revenue group. So those revenue categories that we created for you yesterday, that is um, a revenue group. So that's your revenue department. And then what if you- What period is this for, please? Period revenue. No, but is it for all time? All the revenue on the books or both past or? Yeah, this is all, for the month, all the revenue. I so pulled it for above a month. You can see, yeah, I was going to say there. I, I pulled it for a month from the 1st to the 31st, and it tells you on what date that you print the report as well, if I'm going to print it. Okay. Yeah. So um, we're first going to go through the screen, and then I'll do it to Excel. I'll show you how it takes it to Excel. So if I go to the little drop downs, you can see, so that um, department breakdowns that we did in your rates. So, so much goes to food, so much goes to that. This is my breakdown. So there's your first revenue split, your, your um, first year, and then your second year, your department. So my rate, my um, room rate is broken up like I did with you yesterday with the food. And then the rest goes to accommodation. If your tourism levy includes your rate, you can also break it down to your tourism levy. So you can see there's the split already. I can tick on top. Everything becomes hyperlinks. So if I click on the amount, it will take me to the bookings making up that amount. I can export this and I can also go back to the report. Same with activities. Okay, you can also break down your activities into different departments. Okay, so same how with. How do, you, how do you break it down? You go the hyperlink on the right. On the... Um, yesterday, what we did, we, um, we went under three little blocks. That's the department breakdown. No, no, no. I mean, you know how you did activities where you showed each booking uh, accommodation, sorry. So I'm saying you, you click on, if you wanted to see, you click on the hyperlink. Where no, you the bookings, yeah, yeah. yes, on the amount. You click on, on the, the total yeah. and then it takes you to the bookings. Okay. Activities okay. So the same. same. Activities. Everything is, everything yeah. is hyperlink. The drop downs will just take you to the breakdowns how much goes to accommodation, how much to okay. housekeeping, food, et cetera. Okay. okay, then the department breakdown. Here we give you a separate report again with all your departments and the department breakdown. Your point of sale, your room charges, room charges will come up here. So all the room charges that was done. And then your operations. Here's your right um, rooms by category, no right split. Okay. And if I can want to close it, I can close it. So there's my um, apartments and it all goes to be um, accommodation. So yeah, your luxury, like luxury room, I'd bed on breakfast rate right? and so much went to food, so much went to accommodation.
Okay. Then your occupancy breakdown. So what this occupancy breakdown does, it's telling you how many times a month did for the month of this report did one guest sleep in the room or two guests sleep in the room. Most of my rooms can only take two, but you, some of yours can take up to four. So it will indicate to you how many times do the guests sleep and what's popular. So especially like your family rooms, you will see how many times do people book for and um, fill it up to four. Okay, then your price list, so the revenue. Because we can um, see which rooms aren't selling well and always offer a special on any specific room. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. In this case, occupancy breakdown will show all your resources, all your rooms, or just the ones selling the most. Categories. 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 Okay. And of course, if it's not being sold for the month, it's will we it will not show it. Okay. So what does the one and two mean? So one, one guest. How many oh, times okay. did one guest sleep in that room? Okay. How many times did two guests sleep in that room this month? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So you can see it's pop most popular to be booked for two for two guests because okay. it's total of six months, six okay. bookings. Okay. Then your price list, the whole price list, your revenue breakdown for the price list. We did it yesterday where you could break down those prices that you've got in there. And your housekeeping, um, my process items are this now, but if you can remember yesterday, we uploaded one and we exported to Excel and then we did that the Excel spread to split it into departments for you. Yeah, I think we added um, a, a wine, right? Yeah, so that that is what you will see here, um, your price list items. Then all your activities that you sold for the month, if there's splits on the activities as well, you'll see the splits on the activities. Remember, that's what I said to you, you must still go and do the resources and allocate the department to each activity. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you can see all your activities and how much did they make. Your reservation status, how much is inquiries, quote, pro forma, invoice status, completed status, and deleted status. And once again, everything is hyperlinked. So if I want to go to the invoices for the month, I use my invoices and I can export it to Excel. Okay, same with all these hyperlinks. Now there is an other, if you can see there's an other, if I click on it and I want to see, what is this? Oh, so it's line items. So if I click on the booking there, it will take me to the line item that had no allocation. So JC LaRue, the user didn't allocate it to a department. And now I can reallocate it. Okay, save and exit. So you can fix it like that. All three of these items weren't allocated. I want to leave it because I want something for our health check. So you can just go back in the report or you can open it on another screen. So if I say, uh, I want to open this, open a link in a new tab. I can also open it in a new tab. Or I can just carry on in the screen and go back the whole time and it will take me to the report. Go. Everybody still with me? Yes. Yeah. 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 Then at the end of the month, so you'll see unallocated, yes, miscellaneous, miscellaneous items other. There is an amount in, and then also some of these will show, show um, unallocated revenue. Um, unallocated revenue. If you have that, it means in the line item, the user didn't specify which department that revenue must go towards. So yeah, under action, health check. So now it's going to find everything in this month 
that had no department split, so it doesn't know where to take that revenue towards. So here's a reservation line. Now I can just click on edit. It opens a new tab for me. It goes to the line. You see there's no department. Where must this go towards? Accommodation. And I can save and exit. Then I go back to my report and I do the next one. Also a reservation line. <coughs> Plated options, option two, so that is probably food. So anything that a user forgot to allocate or didn't do properly, you can go at the end of the month and do a half check and you can go and allocate the items. And it then updates your report. Yeah, and I'll show you now, and it opens opens up each one into a new one. Yeah. Um, you see all the bookings that are fixed is here now, so it will open up a new. Um, tab for you every time you do it. Okay, so let's do this one. That's also a reservation line. And if it's a promo code not allocated, it will tell you it's a promo code not allocated. If a rate split wasn't done, it will tell you here in the half check um, a rate allocation, um, mm. uh, priceless item not allocated, reservation line. Um, it will give you a full um, a report on each one that didn't um, have this department slip and it doesn't know where to put the revenue towards in the report. Okay, then once you're done, you can just go back again and do a new health check or refresh your screen and it will only show you the um, items that I didn't do. So you will do, you will do this um, first, before you print or export your reports. Okay. With the health check. Yeah. So that everything is allocated to the correct departments. Okay. So I always leave a few just to, for training purpose, just to show you. Um, Okay, so now I've done the two, so I can cancel here and I can do a health check again. And I can see no problems with that. Okay. So any before you export or print your health of your monthly report, first do all your health check because that's all the items that the system doesn't know. It will tell you unallocated. Um, revenue because it doesn't know where to where it belongs to. Sorry, I just want to know, Sepo, who's going to be doing this health check? Sepo, you're on, on mute. Yeah, I can hear that. Um, I'm asking who's going to be doing this health check. Yeah, most Alina. Myself. yeah, yeah. Okay. myself, Melina. Um, yeah, because it's, it's just uh, uh, reporting on monthly sort of checks, yeah. Yeah, just so when we, because I would like access to the reports, so I can do revenue reports. Yes, and, yes, and yes. I can yes, also yes. check before I'm pulling the reports just to check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Okay, go. So, so I'm going to start now and I'm going to say, take a whole month from me out and take it to Excel. But first go and do your half check because otherwise you will have amounts that you don't know what revenue is that for. Sorry, Henry, which, which item are you on now? Period revenue? Same period revenue. I'm just doing an Excel export oh, now. Okay, okay, okay. Before you did display on screen? Display on screen. So always start on display on screen so that you can um, 
do your half check first and see if your stuff is allocated correctly. Just want to close this workbook because it was something I was busy with. Okay, and it takes it out. Now, every block that you saw on the screen, it takes it to a new sheet. Do you see that? Rooms by categories, revenue, there's the block with the occupancy breakdown, reservation status, miscellaneous. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So if you if you take it to Excel, if you go to your screen, let's just do a week. So to Excel, it will take each block here to its, its own little spreadsheet in the workbook. Its own tab? Yeah. Okay. Go. Any questions? Nothing from me. Then um, let's go to the monthly analysis. So monthly analysis is also good if you want to go back, if you want to go forward, you want to see, are we getting bookings? Do we have bookings? Are we going to make it? How will I be able to pay salaries and all of that things? Yes, I think this is the report that I'll be wanting to use for our revenue report. Because I'd like to do six months ahead. Yeah, okay. because I need to strategize. Yeah, <laughs> so for you it will be nice because um, you can see, you know, there's not enough bookings in yet. So, yeah, let's run a promo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's January, February, March, April, and May. The same, if you export it to Excel, it will take it all to one spreadsheet and it will break it down into columns for you. There's what you've invoiced, so you can see the totals. There's what's in quote and inquiry status. And then we break down your accommodation for you. Okay, there's everything, your activities, your events, other resources is your venues, like your conference room. And miscellaneous is stuff that you just uploaded and you gave them your own name. It's like that flowers in the room. I'm going to do it once or 500 rand, and I've invoiced miscellaneous revenue as well. Okay. Now, if I want. We have a question. Mm -hmm. Is there, there a breakdown anywhere we can see a breakdown of revenue each room? No. This is from the lodge. No. So you don't show, or you only show at a category level? Yeah because you're on categories you can click on that drop down in that report mm -hmm. and then it will show you the rooms that was booked okay okay fine but that's the that's, that's the previous report the period review yeah okay. okay and you can also pull this monthly comment and monthly analysis you can also pull by um, room categories okay you can add it in okay then if you want to know, so here's your occupancy rate for this one, two, three, four, five months. How does my occupancy look like? There's your percentages and a little graph for you. So you can see which days are you not booked. Okay. okay. If I want to see in March, so it calculates that little graph calculates everything that you pulled here and then if you just want to see the month, it will just show you the month. Okay. There's your ref bar, your invoice bed nights. If you don't know how they calculate ref bar, if what's, you just. What's ref bar? Sorry to cut you there. Uh, uh, revenue per available. Okay. Room. okay. Okay. So if you want to know how do they calculate um, ref bar, there is the calculation. If you just hover over the eye, 
it shows you how they calculate it. Okay, fine. Okay. The total nights, your invoice bed nights, uh, your total bed nights that you had, your bed rate, and it also we indicated in a little graph for you. Okay, so anything that you want to know here, your category, oh, your activities as well, it breaks it all down, splits it for you, calculates it for you, and the pixels are in a graph for you. Now let's go back to this one. You see when you start here, you can just select the month. I'm just going to do until the 20th. And you can say on screen, print or export to Excel. And if I want to see split accommodation categories, I can also select that. Okay, so now I've only done one month and then I split it into categories. Now it's showing to me what my standard rooms did, what my luxury rooms did, what my quad biking did, all the all the different um, uh, um, departments, the uh, okay. resources. Okay. So you'll have it all split down if you want that that way. <clears throat> if I'm going to take it to Excel, but I'm only going to do one month. Karina, I think uh, Karika, I just spoke to Karina this morning. Now I'll call you Karina. <laughs> Close um, enough. <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to definitely need the period revenue and the monthly analysis report. Yes, please. So um, Tepo can allocate only certain reports for me. Yeah. Okay. And you will show him how to do that. Yeah, it's already users, right? Yeah. yeah, I already showed him. So. Oh, okay, cool. So you see, that's how it takes it out. And now you can do your own little spreadsheet the way you want it. Yeah. It just takes all the totals out. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then the revenue forecast, also a nice report. It's actually an old report. It could have been replaced by the period revenue, but some of our clients, like I always say to you, loves this report and now they don't, don't want to get rid of it. Okay. But there's quite a lot that's still using it. Okay, and there's the revenue. Yeah, so that's in quotes, that's in invoices. It breaks it down to activities, accommodation, other is venue hires and stuff. It breaks it down. How, what's the percentage that you invoiced and what's the percentage that's still in quotes? So you can clearly see my venue is going down. Outstanding. And there's all the bookings that makes up this period that I've booked. From first to the very first. Okay. Yeah, like you with this, you can go forward and backwards. Yeah, any date that you want to. Okay. okay. But it doesn't have the ADR and the rev car. No. This is just rev straightforward revenue. And then that total is a total of room nights sold. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if I now go from January, to end of March, you'll see, give me more information. There's all the bookings, okay? Mm -hmm. I can export it to Excel. It will only take these columns with the totals to Excel. Okay. I can print the report and I can export details. Export details mean every breakfast, every flower, every welcome basket, every bottle of wine that's on these bookings, on these totals, it will take it to Excel. Okay. Right. In department split, so that's your department report. So all our reports, you can go back and you can go forward. Okay. Okay. So there's my department report for the month. Once again, it becomes hyperlink. I want to see that food. 
what was that, 1050? I can see there is the 1050. That's from a right category. So I sold my bed and breakfast rate and the value comes from my bed and breakfast rate. So you will have DBB here, 20% STO and room only. Okay. Okay, then origins report. I think I'm going to have a lot of information in here. Yeah, as I thought. <laughs> it goes my, um, uh, my uh, students that's using my demo is a bit lazy to select the origin on the bookie. So I'm so going to do from last year up until the are today. And regenerate. So origins, you can see. So I had 260 not selected. Facebook, I had 11 from. Walk in, two, and pretty of farm one. And via this is the coming from the questions. From the origin, where you can select in a booking. Where is this booking coming from? Oh, okay, so it's not like you uh, monitor the links in oh. no okay right. so in the booking if you can remember correctly you I can yeah. select the origin of a yeah, booking. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so get them to do it from the beginning um and then you'll have a proper report not like my students okay um then feedback analysis, I'm also going to be empty because I switched my feedback off. But you can see I've got a lot of profiles set up. So I've got a different profile set up on my feedback where you only have one default. Um, I'm going to be able to show you what the feedback report looks like. So I'll do it on my friends. One. Right, and they've also got different ones, so I can select the month and let's go forward and say submit. So then it shows you, so one, like I said, is horrible, two is okay, um, not so horrible, three is um, I'm just happy face, four is um, um, I'm happier and the five is I'm the happiest. Okay. So you want to get a lot of fives, you don't want ones. We depicted in a graph for you here. And of course, any note that they made or wrote a letter for you or anything, it's we also show it here and you can also export it to Excel. So what in your feedback you provide uh, a space to write those notes? Yes, so the feedback, it shows a, the faces and then at the bottom, it says if you can um, give us more feedback. As soon as I get one, I'm going to send it to you. Okay. Okay. My last booking I made with you, that's why I said leave it there. So 12 hours after departure today, I'm going to get the feedback and I'll send it to you. So these are feedback that guests already replied. They're all hyperlinks. If I want to see who's the four guests that gave me that rating, I can go to the four guests. Okay, and with notes. So my feedback is just switched off in my system because otherwise I get all the feedback of all the people playing here. We also provide a separate report if you just want to export your notes for the month. 
and they use it for hearings and also to show the chef how many complaints or how many people said the food was excellent. In the online bookings, this is where you will also see yours will, mine is also offline because I don't have um, an online link, but you'll see how many get people are offline. Online means it comes from outside. Offline, it's a user. And here you will also see um, where did the bookings come from. Okay. In the point of sale recon, this is the recon uh, um, development that Wayne said they want to do with us. Okay. That you don't currently, they don't have it where they push the full recon to us, um, only BISPO. And this is the development Wayne said he would like to do it with us. Okay. But it's development they have to do on, also, on, on their side, and then we'll just pull in the information. Okay. And then you can have your full, all your room charges in the recon. The venue link report is if somebody made bookings for you and you made some bookings for them, which you're not going to use currently because um, you don't um, have somebody linked in, in your area with your in venue link sent overflow to. But it will show you who made bookings for you, what did they make, did they show up, how much commission, if there is a commission structure. And then they will also be able to see on their side what who they made bookings for. User activity. Okay, so I want to see for, from there to there for the month, all users, or I can just say, I want to see what Jason did and any activity. Okay, now I just want to see what Jason did. He did nothing, no work, fantastic. Okay, so let's see if I pull myself. So you can either ask um, all or what did they what payments did they capture? Okay, I also didn't pay. capture payments. Isn't it easy just to do all? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna leave them now at all. <coughs> Good. So there's everything in the edit, but these descriptions, that's what's on that drop down list. So if I want to see, um, did they check them in, did they um, uh, change something, did they mail, did they delete the payment, did they capture payments, you can check all of it in here. And I normally just go back like that. So if I want to see all of them, who mailed the quote? And there's what the users did. And this user sells and they mailed the quote. Okay. And it will if there's another user that mailed the quote, you will have a new name here with the username. That's my username. And if you'll have another one and another one will show you everybody's what they've done. User activity. Okay, so we can we we don't delete anything from here. We don't um, there's no delete button. You so the users must phone us and ask us, please um, send uh, delete that because we're going to be in trouble with the boss. We can't delete it. Okay. So that's part of the order trail. But if you want to check if one user did that specific thing, 
then you can go and check what did they do and when did they do it. Okay, and then the question analysis. So on your check-in app, you've got now different questions. I added your take a photo in and your other question yesterday. Um, if I want to draw a report and say I want to see that answer, and I want to see that answer, So those other ones are all, and I want to see a report just with those answers. There's the question, and there's the answer. So I can see how many people selected my breakfast. So the same with your question is, um, where, how did you find out about Sunny Mountain? And you've got all those. You can pull that report, that question, and then you can see where did the people come from. Go. Right. Then, um, Tomsa, you're not going to do uh, South Africa tourism. Gate report, like I said to you, you can pull a gate report if you use the gate system. You can see who's in, who's out, and um, left. So if I do a gate report from there to there. I can do it by reservation. I can sort it by date, sort it by reservation, vehicle or last name, and I can say, give me totals. And it's going to calculate now how many people ended with the gate. It gives you a full report of all the people. Of course, mine is not working on another gate person. Okay. Price list analysis, so all your price list items, you only have two, the wine and the uh, conference room per person. There's all the price list items that I've sold. So that's the, the item, it's the price and the value sold. And the, this is the second tier then breakdown. It all went to food, my romantic turn down, I sold 450. Okay, the price so 450 because I've only sold the quantity one. But it's breaking down to the department. Housekeeping is getting 50 rand out of it, and food for, um, gets 400 rand out of my price list item. Promo code usage. So, um, Tepu, you can also check your bottles of wine. You can check um, uh, there how many times did, um, how many bottles of wine did you sell for the month? So, I'm just going to do it from January to get some data on the screen. You can either do it for all your promo codes, it, mm -hmm. there is a list with all your promo codes, or only for the ones that's um, uh, there now or all. Okay. And it will show you how many times is that promo code used. Clearly, mine doesn't get used. Okay, okay. let's see if I put it, because last year I know I had students from Capital Hotel School who played here. Yeah? Which, which students are uh, you guys uh, training? Hotel School? Um, yeah, Capital Town School and Centurion Academy okay. is using Q2B. So okay. if you want intern students from there on holidays, you must let us know. Okay. And what they're doing reservations and stuff like that. Yeah, as, as and they part of also this program. learn how to use a PMS, what's point of sale, how to do charges, and okay. they also do their own events okay, okay. on Q2B. Okay, so there's the promo code usage. I can see my promo code, reservation, um, item number, and there I used it on that line, and I got uh, the amount, and then promo code gave me a 10% discount of one, two. Okay, and then you're higher as well. So 
that's the two promo codes I sold. So that promo code, that's why I said you can make an internal promo code and then you can see how many times that they, the staff use that promo code. If you don't want to give them access to give discount, then give them a promo code so that they can use the promo code to apply a discount to a customer's invoice. And then you can come and draw this report to see how many times that they use that promo code. Okay. Um, admin fee you don't have, so you don't have an admin fee that you're going to charge. Some of our venues put a 10 rand or 20 rand per booking admin fee. But I don't think I've seen anything on your setup that's got admin fees. Okay, then availability report. So this report, let's say for instance, a tour operator phones me. I never deal with him, he's not online or to a company. And he said, what's your availability from the 20th to the 24th? And I can show it by categories on rooms. I can do it on the screen. I can show booked ones and include prices if, as well if I want in the report. Good, so that's what I've got available shows you all my rooms and all my stuff that I've got available and also rights if there's rights in. See, some of it don't have rights. So this is the report where I set you in the venue setup. You will say exclude my inquiries and my quotes. Remember here, yeah, exclude inquiries from availability, exclude quotes from availability. So if you pull that availability report, you can exclude these two out of the report if you want to. Why would you want to do that though? Because there's maybe a quote on a room where you're keeping the um, room, but you're not sure if it's going to happen, you can exclude it. And then it's going to show available for that tour operator. Mm. So it depends. It's a bit risky though, but yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> because then, then you already promised it on a quote to somebody else. And yeah. then they come back and say they want it and the tour operator wants to say. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's best practice to keep the quotes there and inquire on availability, just with different statuses. Yes. So mm -hmm. that's why I said to you when in the venue training, if I have to manage a hotel, I want to take those. Okay. Because then you'll get the upset people. And STR, you didn't ask for STR on your application, eh? Oh, no. Oh, what's STR? Um, it's an aggregator where you can submit your um, accommodation and room nights sold, and all your competitors also do it. And then you can just see how you're faring amongst them. Oh, okay. Karika, that yeah, don't you want to do some training for me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. Just to see what. I don't think, I don't think mm. people in, um, in your competitors would really subscribe because you pay for it, um, and you can get a, a daily, a weekly, or a monthly report to see how you. Yeah. Pay. So you, you just select people, and you won't know. Um, whose numbers are who, you just get to say that your average rate is so much higher or lower and your, your revenue is so oh, much higher okay. or lower. So q 2 b has got an integration part. with them um, for free, but they will only show you what was sold in your area and your average um, occupancy percentage. Mm. But like um, Karika said now, you can upgrade and you can pay for the full um, subscription where the report will show you more. It will give you more details. Sorry, can you I, I was distracted. What, um, if, if we subscribe to yours? Then... It's, they, they offer you a free um, report, but it will only show you the occupancy percentage in your area. 
that's currently sold. Okay. <coughs> so what and if we subscribe to, um, if we if we do it on on Q2B, is it an additional fee? Not from not from us. If you want a more um, uh, intense SDR reports, you know that they're going to charge you. Yeah. But there's a okay. free integration. So what we do is we push um, your accommodation um, uh, uh, occupancy. percentage occupancy. Mm -hmm. And what rate was sold at night, the server pushes it to their <coughs> server, and that's how they um, accumulate their data. Okay. And you wouldn't know yeah. if there are any of the competitors in our area, like um, in Underberg or... No. In the that no I but I can, okay. we've got a account executive, Kostas is his name. He deals with Q2B clients because he knows they're getting the first report for free. So... Um, you can always ask him to do a demo for you and show you more about how it works and what's the offering for free and then what is the more intense reports that you can get out of them. If you can do an email introduction, that would be great. I can just ask okay. him just to see if there are other clients in Lissu to or yeah. Underberg, anyone near us that's using it, if it's worth our while to do yeah. this. Thank you. Um, Tepo, and I'll include you. Yeah. And let them do a demo for you. Um, it's quite interesting when you see how they accumulate the data and how they show it to you. Yeah. Well, so it's a very nice program to have. I just don't think it might not be relevant for Sony, but we yeah. might as well go through the demo process and just see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. anyways, but yeah, we, we digress a bit from. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, okay. I think it's a good idea. But there is an integration with them, and we just push the data towards them, and you can pull your report from here. Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Rather than log on to them, basically. Yeah. Okay, this is my report. It gives me the total revenue and extra blah, blah, blah. But if course, of course, if you want to... Um, Oh, my link is active still on my demo. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so supply, demand, transient demand, all those um, uh, details are in the report. But um, it's entirely up to you if you want to sign up with them or not. Okay. And you can also do a future from today, 365 days. I disconnected my integration. It looks like Costas went in and put it on back again. Okay. <coughs> um, so that's the management reports. Any questions on these management reports? No, no, no. Okay. Payments report, we did all of them. Is there anything that... We did them in the management reports. In the user training, is there anything that you want to come back to in payments report? Well, just give us a hand. Not you don't have to give us a demo. What did it cover again? Because obviously it's a couple of. Well, you can upload your payments, and you don't have to ah, do it one by okay. one. Okay, okay. Payments report to see what payments that come through. You can okay. do it the user for all your users. Okay, okay. Okay. Oh, that's when you were doing the Pygate Recon. Okay, okay. Okay, so you can see your Pygate Recon and it will show you um, everything that came through your Pygate. Okay, basically was... online payments. Yeah. And that I went into my friend's place, Palato, where I showed you. Comes in at as a couple of transactions, and there's a total at the end, and that's the total the bank put in your bank account. Okay. okay, okay. Your virtual credit cards. Okay, yeah, I remember. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Future payments, so future bookings, and you receive payments. Okay. Debtors, we did. Okay, channel manager. So the channel manager. Um, we send it, I think Nikki already sent it to you. 
But if you don't have it, you can ask me, then I'll send it again to you. Or what, I what, think what, I was what, first what, send it to you. How to connect your booking.com and Expedia to Q2B. Um, will you send that to me also, please? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, is so, it is it because uh, when we, you mean Avenant stuff? Yeah, but no. uh, yeah. Avenant is SPI. Uh, so we're we gonna have, we'll have three things. It'll be Booking.com, Expedia, and HDI or Eros. Yeah. Ms. Avenant. Okay, so because my understanding is that the booking and Expedia, the integration is already done by us, well, QTB. Yeah, but you have, to, you have to connect it. You have to connect it. Okay, please send me that, how, just so that we know how, how do we connect okay. it. Yeah, I thought it's automatically. <coughs> no. Okay, so you, you log into your booking.com and Expedia. A, they call us service provider or channel manager. You mm -hmm. select some call as quote Q to B and some calls as quote to book. Okay. Because that's what the Q to B stands. Okay, quote to book. Okay. okay. I'll send you the um, how to do it. Then okay. once once you do that and you say to bookings.com, this is my channel manager. Our support gets a notification. OK, mm -hmm. and th that th this is your property and then they're going to map your rooms. So first they will make your link active by action create new, which I've already got. And I'll say it's a go -do. I'll put your property ID in there, the currency key, rates from categories, update rates and minimum stay and say save. OK, so that's how we will come here. And we'll go and retrieve action, retrieve the categories from whichever OTA. So you guys do this part? Yes. Okay, but so there's a part that you have to do. Okay, but that's if you do it now, okay, we have to be, you must do it. Um, you said you're going to send the data on the 27th for us to upload. Yeah, I think somewhere there. Okay. So on the 28th, on the 29th, you have to have your OTAs connected, otherwise you'll get double bookings. You can't connect your OTAs to us now with no data in, because all your rooms will show available. Yes. I'll you do that change. That? Yeah, just repeat that. Because if we, if we want to go live, let's say our Excellent. You can uh, only link your OTAs to Q2B once your data is uploaded. Oh, OK, 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 OK. OK, yeah. then we're going to upload your data. The rooms will be allocated. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to um, se select Q2B. Support's going to get an email. They map the rooms with the current rooms in Q2B mm -hmm. with the OTA, and they will sync your rate. And I will sync um, the availability to the um, OTA. Okay, okay. But please don't do it now. I'll send you the instructions how to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But please don't do it now. You must first upload your current bookings. Yes. No, no, no. If you don't mind, I would prefer if I could do that, the switch in the OTAs, because I have Okay, to yeah, yeah. So okay. what I'll do yeah, next week, we're starting the data migration then. Once that is done, obviously I'll keep you in the loop, uh, okay. everyone here, and then, then we can Henry will probably remind us to then do this connection, etc. Then um, correctly can run with that. Yeah, because I need to log into Booking.com to select the different channel manager and Expedia as well. Okay. Yeah. Are you? Um, do do you have? I don't think there's other, other links active in Nightbridge. If anyone else is connected to Nightbridge. Yeah. Did you already send your data to um, Iris? Table. Not yet. Okay. Because that do take a while to do the onboarding. Yeah. The same, they will notify us, um, or you can notify us once you get the day ready and they've done the um, integration. Then they all, sometimes they're very good at it and they notify us and they say, okay, this client is finished. This is the property number. These are the room numbers. This is the right code. And then we also set it up in Q2B. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so you always do by categories. 
you will be able to see all your reservations here and you'll be able to see booking.com and it will give you all the reservations. You can also update your rates and on the OTAs you can update up until 18 months to the future. Okay, so if you maybe change the rates and you want to push the rates to the OTAs immediately, you can come and do it here. Otherwise, it will sync with our server. Same with Expedia, and you can also update availability. Okay. Okay. The, this is the now where um, ERES is coming in. ERES, you cannot update your rates and your availability yet from Q2B. So that you will send your rates currently to them and they will update your rates. We then are how they doing availability? Do we have to do availability manually? No, we only push availability to them. And then they push the reservation into And they push the reservation to us. So okay. currently what we're working on and developing towards, they've given us the APIs now, is to update availability and rates from Q2B. Great. Okay. So soon you'll have you'll have available from from Q to B to up to ERES, update your rates and update availability and push it automatically in there. Okay, just um, back to the previous when you were doing the, the booking.com or Expedia. Um, mm -hmm. So how often, if we don't push a month, so if we're changing a rate for tonight, we have to go and push that rate? No, the service syncs with each other every three seconds. Okay, so we don't really need to do an export? No. Okay, you're no, just showing the case we yeah. want to yeah okay if, sorry i just checked yeah oh, if you want to go and do it you're checking rates, you, you're thinking every there's every three, there's a lot of time. yeah there's a lot of videos user sits with booking.com open and he um generates a new ota rates okay and then you'll phone and say i i did it five minutes ago and it's still not showing in booking.com okay so that is why we allow you to do this. So if you want to see it immediately, you can go booking.com and update rates and it pushes it towards booking.com. Okay, and your, your own website is, you don't need to do any push there, that just happens automatically. That automatically, and what yeah. If you hit save or finish, it, it will, okay. Yeah, your, di your book, uh, direct link does it automatically. Okay, great. Okay. Um, okay, okay. I think maybe we're still getting there. Where you can switch it on and off. What? The booking.com. If you decide, okay, we don't want to do bookings. That's what I think I saw in the demo. You can decide to switch on for a certain month, Expedia or switching.com from here. Yeah, you can close the right to booking.com just for a certain period. Yes, but yeah. That's what why I'm would on. you want to do that? I think, like, for example, we did it because of, uh, in the COVID times, we did that. Um, and then maybe sometimes because obviously we want to push more direct bookings. But uh, I remember them saying that you can put it on and off from here. Yeah, yeah you can. In, in that case, what we should do, uh, we shouldn't put it off because the minute you, you close availability, you lose ranking. So and, we should rather increase yeah. the rate of PAs and close them. So that's why I'm saying, why would you want to do that? Because <laughs> the minute you do that, Zepu, mm -hmm. they see you do that. Okay. And you will go that right kind of down lesson. to the bottom of the line if yep. somebody search for accommodation in your area. And it takes you very long to get your way back up again. Yes. Okay. So that is not a good idea. We had one venue in Cape Town that did it December. And I switched it, I opened up the venue again in January, and I'm still struggling, and we are March to get bookings out of booking.com now. Okay. So the system is very clever. They see that you go and close up during peak seasons, that you go and close your whole place for bookings.com. And then they put your ranking right to the bottom. Okay. Okay. So for business point of view, I will not suggest that you do that. Okay. Okay. Then all the logs you will be able to see here. So if I push availability and rates here, that's an action log. So all the logs to the servers you'll be able to see. Okay. And if I pushed rates, 
you'll see all the action logs here. And if there's an error or it didn't accept something. If you see an error here and you see it couldn't match some of your rooms, then you're welcome to contact support. Take a screenshot of your screen or cut it with your little cutter. And you cut it out and you highlight the error and you send it and then double check why is the error, why doesn't the room, the room communicate properly with the OTA or the category, for instance. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that's the channel manager. I'm going to show you on the live system. Do I have access to that? Um, to the channel manager. Yeah. I'm not sure what access does the user still have, to be honest. Where's the channel on? Can you see it? Are you on the... I'm looking quickly. Um, Just look on your menus. Some of the um, user uh, access for the functionality we changed. Yeah, I don't have access. Okay. So that's another thing you'll have to give her access to. Yeah. So this, they are live with two uh, eres and booking.com. Okay. Um, they on uh, categories. So if I go here to categories, you'll see these are the categories that's linked to booking.com. If I only want to see booking.com. So these are the categories and the number of rooms. This is what yours will look like. And if I want to see areas, so there's your categories at that rate, mm -hmm. and there's the OTA categories, and that's the amount of rooms that's linked. Okay, and we'll do the mapping for you. Reservations. So you can say I want to see allmybooking.com. Here's allmybooking.com. And I want to say get new. And it will go and find all the new ones if I want the last updated ones. And can we access the credit card details from here or do we need to log into the extra list? Um, no, so the credit card details comes in on the virtual credit card and the virtual credit card will automatically process the, the virtual credit card when it's due. You can also process it manually no. if you want to. <laughs> okay, and there is um, Expedia, you have to have the CDC. Yeah. You would have to log in. Okay. So now when I do that, it's calling on bookings.com server, which I'm not going to wait for the server it takes quite a while and it will call if there's any new bookings in the last few minutes it will also pull them in okay i don't have a lot of patients with otas and the expedia is not connected you want to see all the iris bookings also they don't connect the iris again i'm actually giving up with them but you can see all your bookings, you can see your logs, and you can see any action logs. Okay, so here's the success. So these are um, uh, automated um, actions that's done by the servers. Okay. And if, if you come and you do a manual um, update and you see an error here, then that's when you contact the support team. But you can see there's no errors actually. They're syncing quite well with all the others. So basically, this is what the, 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 the transactions you've done with the channels. No, so this is how the two servers are talking to each other. They're communicating. That's a log. Reservations is what you're getting from the OTI. Okay. Oh, that's the logs. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So if we get emails and stuff, this is where we come and query them to see what. Oh, 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 oh. What emails? No, no. I mean, if we, for example, get a reservation from Booking.com, 
it will have a booking.com ID. Yes, it will come in automatically into mm -hmm. Q2B. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there you can see where it's coming from. It, it will show this mm -hmm. there. Okay, it will show all the details in here, the virtual credit card details, mm -hmm. all the terms and conditions that as per your booking.com on the bookie. Okay. Remind me again, are the guys booking.com they pay there or at venue? Sorry? I said remind me again, do the when you make a booking by book.com, do you pay there? So what you can have uh, different setups with Booking.com. You can mm -hmm. have um, hotel collect, Booking.com collect, virtual credit cards. Okay. But that's your OTA setup that you decide that you want to do. Okay. As soon as it's an OTA, you'll also have a no show button that I showed to you in the user training. Mm -hmm. And you can also sync and you can also sync messages to this customer to Booking.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we don't have to log into the extra to do that. No, you can do it from here. Yeah. Great. I think that's the day when you went off, when your stuff went off. Okay. So you can send yeah. a message from here. Yeah. Okay. And then does it does it um take it like booking.com because you know they penalize you if you don't reply to messages via the extra net. But this yeah. will go via the extra net, so it will count yes. towards that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Good. And I want to play in a real system. <laughs> but yeah. So let's go back to support that, Sony. Okay, so you'll see here, you've got no connections yet. Mm -hmm. That's how we'll start them as soon as you connect um, okay. booking.com and Expedia and Eris. Mm -hmm. And you'll put your property ID there, your currency key, rights from categories, update minimum stays, and you'll say create. That's how we create it. Then we'll retrieve your categories from booking.com and we'll map them. Okay. Okay, so um, are you still up for the CRM? Yeah, 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 let's do. Okay. Okay, the customer relationship management. That's what CRM stands for. So what you can do when you start off, you go action, create new, and you'll create a new name. And this is my name, accommodation. It's my first one, I can edit it. So there's my name, mine is inactive, but I wanna get all these reminders. Then the next step, you'll say create new CRM reminder, and then it will start off with a blank, on this page. So my first CRM, so what a CRM can do for you, can communicate with client, remind the client to pay, send pre-checking links, um, send, send thank you for your payments and all of that automatically so that you don't have to do it. So how you set it up is by creating a profile name and then create reminders. So my first reminder is 48 hours before arrival, final payment is due. The time triggers is after a status is set. So after I made it from a quote to an invoice, maybe. But this one works like this, before the event starts. And you can also, after a payment, send a message to a client. So I can also do 48 hours before the event starts. 48 hours, it's in invoice status, but less than 0%, 100%. Okay, less than 100%. I'm not going to change the status of the booking. 
mail the user, so it's mailing the, the venue itself. And you can maybe set up a reminder for yourself if you want to check it. You can mail the customer, include the invoice, include any attachment, and send a message. And you can set it up with the variable fields again. So you say, thank you for your booking. Please find it that you please note that your final payment is due before arrival. If you have the SMS integration, you can also set up the SMSs. If you want to send to miscellaneous emails, so let's say you want to send to your Gmail account or to your chef or something, you can also send that. So let's say you've got a reminder set up to say thank you for your payment. Your booking is now confirmed if they paid the deposit. And now you want to notify your chef or your housekeeper or somebody else you can set it up for miscellaneous email as well. And it will automatically run 48 hours before any arrival. It will, and there's an outstanding amount, it will send them the invoice with that message and say, please note, your um, payment is now due. You can also send a pre-checking link Okay, so the pre-checking link is also there in the variable fields. And when you can set it up to say before event start, 24 hours, it's a completed status, it's fully paid, um, a message, and there's the pre-checking link. Then they can click on it and they can check in as well. So have you, so we're gonna have to set these up from the beginning on? Yes. Yeah, we don't set it up. Each venue has got their own CRM reminders, what they want to do, mm. how they want to manage it, etc. I'm so, thinking the, the, from a link perspective, where do we get that link? That, because I see for me it is it has an ampersand, which means sort of it's programmed in. That's available fields on page 24. I've said to you the other day, I think, when you or 23, let's check it. Uh, page 24 and 25, it's all okay. the variable fields that you can use in Q2B. Okay, okay. okay. <coughs> so you can send them a, a reminder if it's a quote and there's a deposit due. So the deposit is due 72 hours after I make the quote. I have paid less than 50% yet, so they haven't paid you anything. You can send them a message to remind them they have to pay 50% deposit to confirm their booking. In your case, it's a 200 rand. Okay. And then... You can so 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 these sorry um mm -hmm. get to cut you there. So these now, once you set them up, trigger for in the background. You don't have to trigger it from the booking. No, it triggers from the background. And if you don't want, let's say for instance, this client is somebody. It's a rep that comes and stays with you every week, and you don't want the CRM reminders to go to you. You just okay. tick it. And the system will not send him okay, reminders. Okay, okay. okay. So mine is just examples. Okay, but every venue's got their own and how they want to set up. What do you, so you must go and decide what do I normally have to do manually? Remind the customer that he needs to pay. Um, it's 48 hours. I want to send them their final invoice so that they can pay me the balance, mm. uh, follow up on quotes for me. Follow uh, up on quotes, yeah. Yeah. What we did a lot was email mm -hmm. invoices. So that we won't have to yeah. uh, do because you do you do it in the action. It will do it automatically, yeah. yeah. So you can also create a CRM that says thank you for your payments. So after payment, 24 hours or one hour, Mm. It's an invoice, and I've uploaded the payment. The system will automatically send them a thank you for your payment. And you can say your booking is now confirmed, blah, blah, blah. 
So CRM is unique to each venue. We don't set up mm. uh, samples for you or anything. So I always tell venues, go and set up the first one and you, what you think your reminders will mm. have to be that needs to be triggered. Then make them all inactive, send a mail. So I've set up those reminders. Please check for me if they're going, this is what I want to achieve with them. Or we do a 20 minute meeting quickly, and then we check them together before you make them active. Ah, okay. okay. So once you set it up, always make it inactive first and then do your reminders and then notify us and then we'll um, quickly go on with you or check it and before you make it active. Okay, so you can now make each is, one is, is in the CRM also birthdays or that's a different thing? Because remember you had your anniversary. That's a different thing, yeah. Okay. okay. So you'll just set up yours for accommodation, I think. So these are just a few yeah. examples. Okay. But the uh, time triggers after status is set. So after I made it a quote, or after I made it an invoice, or after I made it completed status, before the event start, before the they the, the, they arrive, after payment I can send them a. That's the time triggers. It works in hours, and then the status of the booking. What is the status in? Okay. Value triggers paid less than a percentage of total. So five or 50 or 20% paid less than fixed value, which will yours be. Yours will be paid less than 200 rand. Then I'm going to remind them they must pay the 200 rand. And you've got the pay gate on, so you're forcing them from your direct link now to pay the 200 rand. So you won't have a lot of the CRM running for that, but just say Alina makes a booking, okay? And she sends the invoice to the customer and he doesn't pay his 200 rand. The CRM will remind you in 72 hours, you need to pay your 200 rand. Okay. If a deposit paid, you can say if a deposit was paid, you can also set up a CRM to say um, your deposit is now paid. Um, your booking is now confirmed. Thank you for your deposit. Your booking is now confirmed. Fully paid. You can also send them a message to say your booking is now fully paid. We're looking forward to serve you, blah, 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 blah. So there's quite a lot of value triggers. And uh, free time triggers that you can set it up for. Okay, you can say if a, I don't get a reply after, let's say, uh, 140 hours, they take the booking from a quote and this action status, put the booking in deleted status. Okay. Where did you do that? Let's see. So you can set up a CRM mm, to say. If I didn't get a hundred and after mm -hmm. 140 days, any payment from you, change it from a quote and set it to deleted status. And it will oh, that's the, the okay. So in this case, okay. it means if you, if you don't get after 72, it deletes. It delete, it can delete the booking. Okay. But then it, it, it the action <coughs> is set based on the time trigger. So in this case, 72 yes. hours. Yeah. Okay. But be careful with that because some people uh, will owe you 200 rand and I haven't paid you the 200 rand and then you put their booking and deleted status mm. and then they're very upset with you because you now you notify them your booking is deleted and they'll go to another place. Yeah, but that's okay. from codes usually there's no deposit. So. Yeah. I think it's fair with quotes, right? Too. Yeah, of course you can do it and say, uh, after let's say three months, hours. So let's say 2,200 hours. You can even say that. 
if I didn't get any payment on a quote, put it in deleted status. Remember, it will never go away. It will always be here. Okay. Okay, so then your revenue groups is here on your CRM because we link the revenue group. So let's go to my accommodation. Okay, so there's my accommodation one. My deposit type is 50%, yours is fixed to 100. Which CM, CRM reminders, profiles must this um, revenue group. So you've got the revenue groups here, and we also place them here for you. So you can say for my revenue group, use this CRM profile and use this feedback. Okay, and then you can do reports. And you can say, I want to see for my accommodation for this profile. All the open ones. There's all my open bookings for accommodation. I can make notes. If I tick this little tick, the CRM will stop running for this customer. I can push it and I can say, take it to Benita. That's for her report. If she pulls a CRM report, she can see where's the, the, what's the status of the bookings. I can make notes in here. And I can stop the reminders for this customer. I can say, this is now Benito's responsibility. So I can also export this report to Excel or print it. You just want to do for all, for all, and just for, where is Benito? There's all Benita stuff that's allocated to her. So let's say she's the accountant. She will see the final communication. On the booking, she can see your notes. Let's go to yours. Can I call it accommodation? Table? Yeah, yeah. So oh, that's where you make it inactive first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before you do anything, make it inactive. Mm -hmm. So this is where you will create your own. So let me just open up my Firefox and my sample i'm going to create a sample here for you yeah okay. i think the quote one is the most relevant normally we can just work with that then we can always go back to that one when we want to do new ones to see how the setup is yeah so all of that does it update in the booking so there's the sending yes and the changing of the status yeah automatically do it for you. Oh, lovely. Now Firefox won't remember my password. Now do you think I can remember my password? Henry, are we running ahead of time? I remember last time you said we might not get through channel manager yesterday or something, but we... <laughs> yeah. So we... Nearly there, so we can rather leave extra time for um, assistance if you've got your channel manager connected and your payments. Is but that, that, that link from the virtual um, credit cards is ready. Okay. So which one do you, the follow up on quotes one? Do you want me to set up that sample for you? Yeah, let me just quickly get hold of Melly now. I'll just find out how we should do the, the time frame.
How long before quote? That's, that's what I'm finding out now. I'll let you. Uh, okay. Okay, um, Henry, so basically we're going to send a reminder after three days. So it's oh, is it an hour? Okay, so three days is what? 72 hours, right? 72 hours. Yeah. Okay. And, then if, and then if we haven't received, so for so, so the reminder is to say after 72 hours, we'll send the reminder. So then if in the next one, the other one is to say if we haven't received, let's say after five or six days then we delete i don't know if it's part and parcel of the same thing or we have to make a new no, one it's a separate so okay this is follow up, follow up and quote. Quote. okay after status is set so after you married a quote 72 mm -hmm. hours they haven't paid less than fixed value 200 rand mm -hmm. so they haven't paid a deposit yet or anything on the quote mm -hmm. okay you do you want to mail yourself as well? Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's yeah. So that we have. Uh, can you go back to the system and see it? Sorry. Yeah, I'm saying, can you go back into the system and see what you've sent out? Or it's. I think that's. Yeah, we'll leave it to 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 ourselves. Okay, so it's going to send the user this note mm -hmm. of the customer first name, last name. So is this what it is to you? What's this follow up? This client this needs client needs to pay. Or just going just, to say, just say deposit, deposit because we're probably going to yeah. change that here. Yeah. Okay. 200, yeah. Okay, they, and then we say mail the customer. Attach the quote or invoice, yes, and this yeah. is the wording. Now you can um, come this and change, change it. Email, yeah, yeah, yeah. Change okay. it to your own. This is the variable fields. Okay. So it's going to put in dear, blah, 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 and you can change your own. And it says, please find and attach your quote for your booking mm -hmm. event name on this date to that date. Mm -hmm. Please confirm. confirm with our reservations department, if you wish to continue with this booking, you need to put your own email in there. Okay. And then you can change this variable fields to maybe have your own the venues details in there. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I think the only thing here, we might as well, I think, put it there at res, res at Sunny Mountain. So if you can just change the email. Can uh, res at sunny mountain does yellow Okay, so uh, what res at, at sunny, sunny mountain mountain does yellow Yeah. Okay. Great stuff. And then the next, okay, so I see then the next one would be delete 
uh, code after six days or something. Yeah. So yes. this is a sample for you to work from. Yeah, yeah, now you can go and you can start setting up more. Okay. So I just copied from my other system. So you can have some of the variable fields in here. Okay. No, 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 I'll, I'll copy and one. paste because I'm very lazy to type. Okay, uh, I'll do that one. So what's so, the code to the bottom bottom? What's that field here? This Same is method. the miscellaneous one. Oh, if I if want to include it, do the reservation and include an email and send them a message. Oh, okay. So some of the wedding venues do it, then they send it to as well. The chef is in here or the lady that bakes the cake or the flower arrangement lady. And the, message, the venue just sends the deposit for the wedding was now paid for this day to that day. Mm. Uh, please note the cake and the flowers needs to be arranged. Okay. And only the person, only the person in that email will get that. Email. Only the person in this email will get that mail. Right. Okay. This message. Go. So there you've got that you can go and play around and make it look nice and however you want to. I'll show you. Okay. Mm, it can qu do quite a lot for you. I'm showing all my friends places. They're going to kill me, but they do it so well. <sighs> Just to show us ones that do it well, so we know how to do it. <laughs> yeah, she's the, she's OCD like me, so she does it very well. She sends the um, digital electronic. If you don't do it, then she sends it again and again and again, and your balance is due. But what I like about her messages, she brands out what she wants you to read now. Because you're probably tired by now for reading all her stuff. You see? And then she mails herself as well. The same email. Did she create these herself? Yes. Oh, so you can go down to um, indemnity. So, what, so in that... Would it see if you haven't done the indemnity? Do you anything? see? Yeah. So if the system tells, picks up that you didn't do it, it will remind you again to do it. Where did so you, is, as the actions, where you choose that? I know it's status something. Yeah. What do you mean? It's fully paid? Yeah. yeah. Before the event start, 120 hours? No, no, I, I get that. Fully, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I understand the fully paid one yeah. because it's from a booking, right? So I'm just thinking those fields, because you have fully paid. So I'm thinking in this case, she probably has something along the lines of indemnity. Uh, yes or no. So where would she have selected that trigger? If you this, understand what I mean. No, I don't understand. Okay, you. if you scroll up on this on this page, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you see where the trigger is. Here it says fully paid, right? Yeah. But now the reminder from what I understand is that it's an indemnity reminder, which means she she can she's able to see somewhere that you haven't accepted the indemnity. The system will see it. Then how the do you tell the system? Because here when I look at the trigger, it's around paid status, which I you know what I mean. So um I'm thinking somewhere it needs to say, ah, this person hasn't clicked on the indemnity, and that's why she's setting the reminder. Yes. But the, she just set it up with the link. I don't understand what you are asking me. Okay, let me use the payments. If you haven't paid, we have a... The system will pick up that you haven't paid, and, and it will you send you an invoice. Right. Then, if you didn't check yeah. in, the system will pick up that you didn't check in yet, and it, it will resend you the... Um, so the, the question is, will if the system will pick up that the indemnity is not signed, yes. will it resend the indemnity? Yeah, if you yeah. set it up. So what she's okay. done is after... 20, 12 hours, after 24 hours, she didn't do it, after 48 hours, so she starts at 120. Do you see that? 
yeah. she gives you an opportunity. You didn't do it, then she's going to remind you again. You didn't do it, she's going to remind you again. You mm. didn't do it, she'll remind you again. And if you didn't do it, she'll remind you again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think the easiest example is to say in a payment, right? We know if you haven't paid or not. Because mm -hmm. in the booking, we, you know what I'm saying? It don't have an outstanding balance. So based on that, I can see how you can set that reminder because it's going to check that field and yeah. say you haven't paid, right? Thus, yeah. you can do balance due. So with that um, concept or example, with digital indemnity, uh, so with the payment one, sorry, to go back to there, you would say, if payment there's a there's a trigger that says if payment not fully of the value of this much so that it, you so you're telling it if the payment is below the certain amount that's how it creates the reminder so yeah. i'm saying with the digital indemnity where do you tell the system to check the indemnity because i didn't see that part like if it was a drop down where you say no, if the, it, you know it, what i'm it, saying yeah, you just put the, the link in there. You don't okay. check it. Yeah. Do, you, do you mean technically where do we go and check it? Is that yeah, yeah, no, no, you when mean? you're setting it up. So if you, let's say if you go to one of these um, reminders, let's say payments due, for example, right? So you say 120 go, hours, if you yeah. haven't completed the electronic check-in, send it again to the customer. So if they okay. didn't get a check in from the customer yet, it will send it out to him again. Also, this is where you tell them that it's a check in this 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 variable field here. Yeah, yes. A, okay. It because then we'll go to a check in app. Okay. Because if you see here on the top there, it says trigger, which means payment. You know what I'm saying? So I can see when you how you can do that one. I just didn't see. So basically, in the in in the in the in the description, you have to put the trigger. You have to put the what you want to check there as a variable field. But I just want to close the other browser. Okay. <coughs> so that pre-checking link will take them to their booking. If mm. the system picked up that they didn't check in mm. yet, it will remind them again and again and again and yes, again yes, and yes, again. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Okay, she's got it very extensively because her father's at the gate and she wants the people to do the check-in before um, mm -hmm. they arrive. So she reminds them up to 12 hours before yeah, they arrive yeah. to do it. If you didn't check in, the system will keep on reminding you. Yes, if you yes, do yes. check in, the system will stop reminding you. Yeah, yeah. I think in the setup from what I saw, you you the trigger you put it in the description as a variable field. That's yeah. what uh, and the minute you check in, although it's not maybe your arrival date, we these people are only arriving on the 19th. Mm -hmm. They did their pre-checking on the 12th already. They completed okay. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it's a bit confusing there because you're in the actual um CRM, your trigger is only payment based. Not no, it's, if it's fully paid, so only fully paid clients, so you uh, remind them 24 hours is a uh, amount outstanding. Oh, then you okay, can set okay. it up to send them a she is only if you're fully paid, you'll get okay. my check in link. Okay. Okay. But yours okay. can be different, yours can be um, to say uh, attach here to your invoice. Please pay your final amount now, and here's the pre-checking link. Please complete the pre electronic pre-checking okay. link. Okay. And the system will pick up if the customer checked in or not. Okay. If not, the system will remind them again. That's how she set up hers. Okay, no, I get it. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. but if you if you don't if you're not worried about clients. That's coming, um, and they can settle when they arrive. And you're not going to set up one. You can say for 24 hours before the event start, 24 hours, it's an invoice status. 
um, you no value triggers. You don't worry because they're going to settle when they arrive there. Mm -hmm. You can send them the pre-check-in link here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I think we have a we have a template to work from. Yeah. So this is what you must think about. How do you want to set up? Do you want to send reminders? Um, how many do you want to set mm -hmm. up? You can see what like what she does. If you don't complete the 12, 24, 48, 72, then 120 hours, if you don't complete it in that time, the system will mm. keep on remember, reminding you up until 12 hours before you arrive mm. there. Okay. And she only works with fully paid. So if you fully paid your booking, then you will get the check-in app. So the next one you can maybe do for yourself is before the event starts, um, let's say 72 hours or 24 hours, your full amount is now due. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. when do you collect your full amount? On arrival normally? Or when do you collect the full amount currently? Uh, let me find out from the edit. I think it's on arrival, but we might want to do it before, yeah. Yeah, I'll say, I think it's easier if you remind people before, um, and then they can, they can send a message to you, and they can say, can we settle, can we um, yeah. yeah, or can we settle on arrival, and then it's up to you to say yes or no. Um, and then let's say, for instance, you make an arrangement with a customer and you say, OK, you can settle on arrival. You can type a note in there and you can say 2003, 2024. Customer will settle balance on arrival. So you can make a note for yourself there and stop the reminders to run then the reminders will not go out to this customer. And there's a note that they will pay on arrival. OK, I know that makes sense. So I'm going to leave this test booking of mine because I want to get your feedback. So I leave this booking here because I'm, I'm checking out um, now today, 2 o'clock. 12 hours after that, I'm going to get the feedback. So I just want the feedback to come through for you. Oh, so you're sending us the feedback by the booking? Yeah, no, so I want to get, I'm the customer here. Yeah? Okay. So I want to get uh, feedback from you to see how your feedback's working. Oh, okay. okay so okay. leave the booking here yeah, because it's to the 20th. Oh, so this morning, 10 o'clock, I checked out. So 12 hours after 10 o'clock, I'm going to. So the server will send me a feedback. So okay. please don't delete my booking or move it now because I want to test the feedback for you. No problem. Okay. I thought you meant we must give you feedback. That's no, no. Okay. <laughs> the automated order. feedback. Okay. So okay. I think um, what I... Think is, I'm going to send you the um, how to connect your channels, okay. and then we can rather spend another time when you've connected your channels. And then once you've got to get to the CRM, set up one, decide what your CRM, set it up, and then you notify me before you put it active. And okay. we'll, we can do it together and check it together. Okay, 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 okay. I think that's uh, is that all, Andrew? Yeah. Okay. Well, now that is the whole yeah. So let story. me say this, um, Karika, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can. Okay. So what we'll do is I'll set up a follow-up meeting either tomorrow or the day after, depending on the time. Then we can go through the use, the the the, the rights and the permissions. Okay. Um, because Thank I didn't you, know what's what Sorry. first. Sorry. So. Okay. Yeah, so then we can go through quite a, quite a couple of things, like you said, now that we all understand them to see. Um, so I think as well, in preparation, you can 
through the training, you can just write down. I know there's rates, there's discounts, there's reports. So if you can remember any list, yeah, you can. Uh, then we can go through that. Maybe half an hour, then we can do it. Okay, perfect. Okay.